welcome to the Hockey House for our, this week, the first edition of Sideline View the, for 2013. Jeremy, happy 2013! First time I've seen you this year. So know. you've been on a five-day vacation to the Bahamas. Yes, so I'm yes. Glad to have you back. And I mean, I didn't even get a tan. Though. That's <laughs> yeah. a sad thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's the way it is. But uh, anyway, we got uh, preps he- heating up here a little bit um, now. We you know had kind of uh, some games going on over the holidays, um, but uh, it hasn't been extremely busy. But uh, it's going to start kicking in here this week now. And I know tomorrow you're doing boys basketball at Staples Motley. I believe it's Pequot Lakes is there. So uh, what are you kind of looking for there? You know, both teams are kind of uh, rebuilding their programs. and Not necessarily really, but rebuilding, but uh, trying to find themselves, trying to find some identity. Staples is winning some games lately, so that's a, that's a good thing for them since they've been down the last couple of years. Pequot's kind of in that mold where they really still don't know what type of team they are, so they'll, they'll it'll be a, a close, con, closely contested match, is my guess. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Pequot does have Jordan Redmond down in the paint, and he's a he's a monster. He's probably the, the better the better center in the area. So uh, we'll see how he handles uh, Staples Motley. It'll be interesting. I know uh, Coach Gruy was pretty high on this Jacobson kid who uh, mm-hmm. had a good game. Um, over the weekend, and um, I know he's, he said uh, in that Little Falls tournament that he thought Uppsala was uh, one of the better 1A teams he's seen in a long time, yeah. so that's, uh, you know, coming from a guy who's been around a while, and uh, that was some high praise, I thought, for a, a 1A team which beat Little Falls, which is a 3A. Yeah, yeah, I've, I heard that, too, from uh, the Crosby coaches. They said yeah, Uppsala's uh, a, the real deal, the re- a good team in 1A, so, so yeah, for, for people to lose to Uppsala, not a, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Up plus a good team, especially if they beat Little Falls, and everybody knows Little, Little Falls is a well-coached, uh, good 3A team. So. Absolutely. Tonight I've got the Brainerd Boys basketball, their first game back in uh, about almost two weeks now, so we'll see what the layoff has been. Um, they're off to an unbeaten start, uh, best start in about five, or I guess it's like six or seven years now, and uh, so I'm um, you know, looking for, um, you know, hopefully for them to keep going. They really look good so far this year, and... Uh, you know, have it all. I think size. They've got quickness. They've got you know perimeter shooting. They can go inside. So uh, we'll see how far this thing uh, takes them. But uh, tonight's kind of the kickoff for the, you know, for the I guess the last. Well, not really the last half, but it's <laughs> no, still, they're still only, they've only played like six games. Yeah, so January's a January's a tough stretch for Brainerd. They'll play a lot of games this yep. month. I know uh, tonight there's a big swim meet here. Sartell comes to Brainerd. Sartell's ranked. I want to say number three in uh, Class One A. Um, Coach Zemke is expecting that to be for the conference championship, dual meet-wise anyway, but uh, Sartell's been up for a number of years now, and so has Brainerd, so um, that'll be a uh, you know, very good one uh, coming up here, too. Sartell, both boys and girls swimming. What's, uh, what's, what's going on with their swimming program? Down I know, I've been to their pool. They have a really a nice facility. Uh, it's an eight-lane facility, okay. um, you know, kind of a... A mini, uh, I don't know, <laughs> mini you, Olympic facility, I sure, guess. I mean, nice sure. seating and stuff. Um, you don't have to worry about people walking in front of you like <laughs> you do in Brainerd and oh. uh, or Windows. I mean, it's really a nice, um, nice facility. So, um, but uh, they've had a number of outstanding individuals and teams in the last few years, and uh, they've really, they've really had a nice run there. So, CLC's going on this weekend, is that correct? Right. They've got a uh, kind of an abbreviated uh, tournament. Uh, there's um, only three women's teams, so CLC women are just going to play on Friday. And that's at six o'clock, and then they will not play on Saturday. The men will play at eight o'clock Friday and at uh, four o'clock. Now that was moved up from six o'clock Saturday. So just kind of a shortened uh, tournament, but first games for those guys as well, men and women, um, since the break. So we'll see how that break works out. It's a, it's a long break, and most teams do play in holiday tournaments. We'll see how uh, the Brainerd and CLC handle the the stretch. Uh, you know, it's been interesting because I remember, you know, years ago we had so many teams and so many tournaments. Mm-hmm. We were hosting all kinds of tournaments here, and this year I think we just had the swimming and the skiing, which I think has been that's the way it's been the last couple of years. Yep. And, uh, and when we had basketball all over, I mean, boys hockey was up in Grand Forks, but uh, the Brainerd seems to have cut back on those tournaments. I'm sure they're expensive. Yep. Oh, yeah. um, you know, you throw in hotels <coughs> and all that stuff and meals, and so... Um, it's been kind of a, a different break. I mean, uh, there's been years where we're chasing people all over the, <laughs> yeah. the state and, and elsewhere. So uh, it's been kind of kind of nice, but uh, yeah. we're, we'll make up for it here in the next couple of days oh, yeah. now, oh, for yeah. sure. So that's what January is for. That's right. Well, NFL playoffs. Um, you, you tell me about your teams. I'll tell you about mine. I, I, I picked Patriots and 49ers to go all the way beginning of the year. And <clears throat> excuse me. They both have. Uh, they're both in the playoffs. Both uh, looking pretty good. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with my picks. How about, how about you? How about your picks? Let's see, the Lions didn't quite make it with a four and twelve record, <laughs> so I uh, didn't uh, really do very well there. I don't know who else to pick out of the NFC. I mean, the Packers are, are rolling, I think, but uh, just got beat. Uh, so yeah, I think um, it's got to come down either the Forty Nine ers, the Texans. I know have kind of dropped way down. I mean, lost their last two, but. Uh, I'm, I'm still sticking with. I got, took the Broncos. You so, did take uh, the Broncos that's, in that's, there. Uh, according to one AP story uh, yesterday, they're the 
the number one team as of right now, they thought overall. I mean, that's one guy's opinion. So sure, uh, yeah. we'll see how all that They're shakes solid, out. Both so. good offense, good defense. So definitely, well, definitely. Yeah. Plus, so, got, plus, got to play a mile high. That's tough. They got a home field advantage all the way through. So I mean, Peyton Manning's had just an unbelievable comeback year, and um, you know Eric Decker from Cold Spring has been a great receiver. So it's uh, it's been uh, been pretty fun to watch. AP for MVP. Ah, uh, boy, that's a, that's a tough call there. I think he almost he's got to be in the conversation for sure. I mean, there you know everybody looks to quarterbacks. I was reading a story the other day about how uh, the last I don't know 50 years, how many quarterbacks and running backs get that MVP because there's only been two defensive MVPs in the history of NFL. One was Alan Page, and the other one was Lawrence Taylor. Yep. So, um, uh, but I just um, you know that's that's a pretty hard. Uh, um, you know, performance to overlook when you think about how he uh, just made it look so easy and getting 200 yards, or you know, yeah. coming nine yards short of that 2,000 uh, record by Dickerson, and uh, it's it's been pretty amazing to watch him the last few weeks. I mean, he's just he's just a phenomenal player, and of course, coming off that knee injury just a year ago, that makes it even more special. So I think he'd have to be more of an MVP than a comeback player of the year. I'd almost have to go with Peyton Manning, I think, just because he missed a whole year. But yep, yep. So I don't know what... Broncos made the playoffs last year with Tim Tebow, so that's that's my justification. Tim Tebow on the sidelines last <laughs> night at Florida. That did a lot of good for them, too. So uh, yeah. uh, and They also had Emmett Smith there, but that didn't work out real well no, for the, no. for the uh, Gators. So Anyway, I don't know anything else this week. We're uh, just kind of... We'll be back at it here uh, in the next couple of weeks. So hope you join us next week at uh, from the Hockey House again. Thanks a lot.